Seven days flown by as they do. Hopefully, those seven days have been productive. You've had some positive impact. You have also been positively impacted by others whose paths you cross, either by your plan or Divine appointment, as we've talked about in other raps past. Hope's in a great seven days for you since we last wrapped it up. And here we are at a different kind of Friday for a lot of folks throughout the world. This is the official Good Friday. So happy Good Friday to those of you who recognize this as Good Friday. And that is a little teaser to what today's rap will be focusing upon. Today as we 
weekly wrap up is entitled Innocent Perfection, Intentional Passion for Mere Mortals, the Immortal Phenomenon. Let me repeat that. Today's weekly wrap-up is entitled Innocent Perfection, Intentional Passion for Mere Mortals, the Immortal Phenomenon. Let's do this. Approximately 2024 years ago, marks of all in history the most significant birth. When the divine became an infant boy human, the incarnation and realization in a measure of all places, where in that moment only his earthly parents, shepherds, wise men, and welcomely heavenly hosts knew his true significance, his life that lay ahead, infinite, immeasurable worth. As prophesied, no rooms for travels remaining, a stable offered as the last resort, in which the manger served a grand purpose, although a man's mind considered lonely, so apropos to enter the world where lambs were on the scene, as he was sent to become the sacrificial lamb, the one most holy. Living now 33 years sin-free, never submitting to face temptations, no tarnish, no blemish to his reputation, simply preaching the teachings of his father's laid out salvation plan, while minds filling, eyes opening, hearts touching, bodies healing across miles and miles and miles of desert land. Yet, that one desert encounter between Jesus and the tempter after 40 days and 40 nights without food and utterly exhausted, proven still mentally strong enough to command Satan's exit from him, Satan, his father's words, once again instituted and expressing his chosen position that his father held the ultimate power and glory, and as the only one, Jesus would be bowing before and serving. That definitive line drawn in the sand marked the beginning of the prophetical leave, foretold inevitable end. Satan might have left Jesus' presence, but upon the Pharisees, the people, and Roman leaders, his evil manipulating influence began. No longer did the people praise Jesus to celebrate him as their promised Messiah, and the fear of losing power to him became an intense motivation, and the Pharisees' attention all consuming to deny him of the throne by twisting the words he had once spoken, claiming his status as the Son of God, as abhorrently blasphemous. Working that angle so strongly against him that ultimate goal to get him sentenced to his death by crucifixion. Prevailing in their quest, the prophecies put Jesus on his passion path. Blood stains every step of the way, proving the immense suffering inflicted upon his body up until he commended his spirit to his father and succumbed to taking, more better spoken, his chosen last breath. A willing servant sacrifice, relinquishing his majesty and his powers, all for the sake of redeeming our relationship to the father in what appeared to be a series of forsaken ungodly hours. Passionate passion in history, no other exists in comparison when it comes to the ultimate sacrifice and intensity of suffering. If you ask most folks, all Fridays are good. Yet this one in particular, annually celebrated, out of approximately 105,754 would, could, should be recognized as the goodest. When redemption was attained and our relationship with God as a clean slate was reestablished. Yes! The ultimate sacrifice paid for, bought, and sealed at an immeasurable price none of us could ever possibly afford. Jesus paid it all, eliminating the great divide between us and the Creator, our Lord. Here lies the true beauty regarding perfection, leaving the garden during that evil temptation situation. We didn't ask for a Savior to come make amends for our simple behavior. It was God who crafted a way in order for us to regain His favor, as He strongly desires us to have a relationship with Him. Let me say that again. The ultimate sacrifice paid for, bought, and sealed at a measurably price none of us could ever possibly afford. Jesus paid it all, eliminating the great divide between us and the Creator, our Lord. Herein lies the true beauty regarding perfection, leaving the garden during that evil temptation situation. We didn't ask for a Savior to come make amends for our sinful behavior. It was God who crafted a way in order for us to regain His favor. And He strongly desires for us to have a relationship with him. Hashtag ultimate sacrifice voluntarily paid for regardless of the price. Hashtag so thankful for a savior who brought us back into God's favor. Hashtag ultimate sacrifice voluntarily paid regardless of the price. Hashtag so thankful for a savior who brought us back into God's favor. Hashtag ultimate sacrifice voluntarily paid regardless of the price. Hashtag so thankful for a savior who brought us back into God's favor. Yes. 
Christ sends to earth as our savior. He's the great divine breaker, whose open sacrifice brought us back into God's favor. And beyond wonderful to freely rely on and gain strength from our creator. Yes. Yes, yes. Jesus Christ sent to earth as our savior. He's the great divide breaker whose ultimate sacrifice brought us back into God's favor. Ain't it beyond wonderful to freely, directly rely on and gain strength from our creator. That is hard <laughs> to wrap your mind all around. It really is. Ultimate sacrifice. Ultimate Price voluntarily paid. So the Great Divide is the name of the tune that set us up. And I have some bonus tunes, once again, as I always let y'all know, on the weekly wrap up playlist that you can find on Spotify. So there's a couple other tunes. I'm saying they're the bonus setup tunes. So if you look down in the verbiage toward the end of all the verbiage, which is the lyrics of these raps, I always put in the link straight to that Spotify playlist. But if you went to Spotify, you could search by the weekly wrap up playlist. Uh, anyway, the other two set up tunes that are the bonus for a little deeper reflection on today's Good Friday celebration are The Cross slash The Kiss, which is a live um, recording by High Point Worship. And the second one is uh, titled Arms Stretched Wide, in parentheses, Good Friday. Arms Stretched Wide, parentheses, Good Friday, by John Jorgensen. So if you're looking for a little time to reflect deeper on the annual celebration of Good Friday, those two are really worthwhile taking the time to listen to. So I strongly recommend you take a moment and listen to those bonus set up tunes. And all I have left to tell you is have a wonderful Easter weekend with you and yours. And until our paths cross again, stay strong and share your strength. Later.